Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. ABC Sunday, it's the star-studded movie event of the year. And the Oscar goes to... With a Godfather celebration, 50 years in the making. Plus, the first live performance of We Don't Talk About Bruno. A tribute to 60 years of James Bond. Salute. And a blockbuster show opening... You cannot miss. This is nuts. Regina Hall, Amy Schumer, and Wanda Sykes host the Oscars live Sunday on ABC. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. I attended my first in real life conference last week. Social media marketing world happened with actual physical people in an actual physical place, the San Diego Convention Center, and mostly without masks, though the hugs and enthusiastic closenesses still faint compared to what they once were. Ironically enough, the buzz was all about the metaverse and NFTs, the fake worlds where the prognosticators are saying the future lies. Everyone was excited about being back in person only to talk about never having to do anything in person anymore. But that's just me being Mr. Cranky Pants, I guess. My talk on influence marketing and the concepts we talk about here on Winfluence went over pretty well, I think. The social media marketing world audience is generally made up of more of the small to medium sized business owners and marketers who are still new to a lot of the digital and social space. Influence marketing there is probably considered an advanced topic, and I was the only one speaking on the subject, but the crowd was really engaged. They asked great questions. I got a lot of good feedback, so hopefully I helped a few folks along with their thinking. Maybe even a few of you have joined us here on the podcast. Welcome. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today, public speaking and public speakers. I'll break it down in a couple of ways. First, public speakers are influencers. The nature of their craft is to stand in front of a room full of people to persuade them of something. That's our core definition of an influencer, someone who can persuade an audience to take action. It's important for you to know who the influential public speakers about your industry, business, topic, or product category are. They are low-hanging fruit in terms of finding influential people to help you. But I also want to talk about what makes an audience not trust a speaker. As I walked around social media marketing world, I saw a slightly disturbing trend that compels me to share. So we can hopefully not evolve to become the types of public speakers that lose the trust of our audiences, and we can know how to spot them so we don't use them. How public speakers as influencers can help your brand and what to look for in a bad choice. That's coming up in today's commentary. Some closely related housekeeping first, though. I am speaking at the Influencer Marketing Show in New York City on April 27th. I told you about that last week. And I have a discount code for you to get tickets to join me there now. IMS has been held in London for the last few years. I've been honored to be an MC and moderator for the last two as they were virtual events. Now IMS is not only back to IRL, but it's here in the United States for the first time. It's a one-day event in New York City, just off Broadway at the New World Stages on West 50th. It will be Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, coming up in just a few short weeks. I will be chairing one of the stages there, as well as moderating a panel for my friends at Tagger. Go see the full speaker and topic lineup and get your ticket at jason.online slash IMS Falls. The IMS is short for Influencer Marketing Show. Jason.online slash IMS Falls. 
And when you check out, use the code FALLS, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, and get a 15% discount just for listening to Winfluence. That's jason.online slash I-M-S FALLS, and use the code FALLS, all caps, on checkout. The panel I will be moderating at IMS New York will feature Pete Kennedy, the founder and president of Tagger, our presenting sponsor on Winfluence. He and I have been talking here on the podcast lately about how Tagger's new signals feature helps agencies and brands be more strategic with their influencer marketing efforts. It's also an amazing new business tool if you are an agency, right? So if you're an agency and you're out there pitching new business all the time, now you can create a signals report looking at specific um, brands that you're pitching or their competitors to understand what is their strategy, what influencers have they hired, what content has resonated within those strategies. Uh, who are the people ingesting all of this content? Um, you know, how many impressions are they delivering in market every month? So it's kind of unendless in terms of the amount of data that you can visualize. Uh, and it's also a really amazing visualization tool. We, we have all these different components where you can pull any query you want and then visualize it in multiple different ways. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, even if it's just to check out the new signals feature, just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. Public speakers as an influencer category you should consider. That's next on Winfluence. One of the revelations I shared with the audience at Social Media Marketing World last week, I think that most in the room hadn't considered in their influencer marketing efforts, was there are different categories of influencers. It's not just people who have big followings on Instagram and TikTok. Those are social media influencers, but you also have internal influencers in your company, traditional media members who are influential, political lobbyists, influential people in your community, and so on. Within your industry, you also have trade influencers. These might be executives at the most successful companies in your niche, authors about the topics that are hot in your space. But a good place to look to know who I'm talking about is the speaker dais at your industry conferences and trade shows. As we covered at the top of the show, public speakers are influencers by definition. When everyone in your industry goes to hear Sally Speaker talk about how issue A affects your industry, she is setting a bit of a tone for how everyone in the industry can or should respond. If her directions or advice point to a particular philosophy or even solution that benefits you, then you win. If you're smart, Sally Speaker is one of your influencers or influence targets. Now, this makes perfect sense in the B2B space. If you sell engine components, then you want the speakers at engine component industry-related conferences or at least those that attract decision makers at companies that buy engine components. You want those speakers to know you and your products, perhaps even recommend them, but at least illustrate some degree of trust in you as a company or partner. How do you do that? Well, you engage them to write a white paper or co-author a report sponsored by your company. You hire them to do a webinar for your customer base, which exposes them and their expertise to more people, growing their audience and influence. You have them consult on your products or service development so they feel ownership in what you do. When they have that, they naturally talk about it and you to others, even from the stage. But it works in the B2C space too, just not with conferences. Consumers don't generally go to conferences. Sure, there are some built around social causes and such, like the Earth Day conference. Consumers do go to film and music festivals too, but those are less about speakers and more about performances. However, the thought leaders in film or music, or even in fashion, consumer electronics and such, the ones that speak at the trade shows, often are quoted in the mainstream media about their opinions on those products, services, events, and more. So, connecting with them is another avenue of influence to reach your target audience. If I am promoting a new band, I want Britney Spanos of Rolling Stone to know about them, not because she speaks at a couple of events each year, but because she writes about emerging artists in the top magazine for music on the planet. Any conference featuring companies that sell to consumers will have a who's who of speakers that are often quoted in the media or even followed by interested consumers on social media to choose from. Partnering with them or at least building a relationship with them so they know who you are and what you're up to 
is a smart influence marketing play. Before I go into the why of prioritizing certain public speakers for your influence marketing efforts, allow me to take a quick side for context. I am a public speaker in the marketing and communication space. More specifically, I speak frequently on digital marketing, social media, and yes, influence marketing. I've been speaking at events much of my career, but with the publishing of my first book in 2011, I went from three to four events per year to three or four events per month for a while. I've been around the block a bit on this, but I have been around the block in the marketing space, which is an interesting bubble in and of itself. We're kind of like coffee makers who sit around and talk about coffee making, but sometimes forget to talk to non-coffee makers who actually drink the coffee. It's a weird, incestuous bubble in the marketing world. But because of my background in public relations, I've worked with clients on thought leadership and public speaking opinions in other industries, too. So I like to think I at least see it from other angles, though I haven't lived those personally. I tell you that because the Mr. Cranky Pants will come out a bit here. The honest truth is that about 85% of the people who speak at conferences have little to no business doing so. They aren't any better or smarter or more insightful than you are. They just have the nerve or ego to get up in front of people and give their take. But that alone attracts people to listen, which gives them the potential of influence, even if their credibility doesn't necessarily warrant it. The ones who are able to communicate trust and credibility through their onstage presence come away with influence over the audience. So a good public speaker doesn't have to be an expert to succeed there. Why focus on public speakers then if they don't have to meet your standards for being credible or influential in your space? Well, because your opinion doesn't matter. The audience's does. That's who you're trying to influence. That's not to say you don't choose your public speaking influencers carefully. They can be both credible and great performers. But when someone is hot because of their style over their substance, they can still be of great benefit to your brand in the right context. Thought leaders are valuable to consumers because they have a perception of experience, credibility, and trust. If someone speaks at a conference or is quoted by the media, the assumption is that they passed some level of test or scrutiny for the privilege. Someone saying something beneficial to you from the stage or in a quote somewhere is good. Having many say similar things in aggregate is a smart strategy. So don't forget to think of industry thought leaders and speakers as an influencer category. But there are also reasons consumers or B2B buyers in the conference context don't trust a speaker. As I walked around social media marketing world last week, popping into a dozen or more sessions, I saw two things that emerged that concerned me. They weren't overtly noticeable or bad to everyone else, so I'm not necessarily criticizing the event. But if these things are happening at marketing conferences, they're happening elsewhere. And I've been at many trade shows outside of marketing to validate they sure do exist. The worst performance sin a public speaker can make that destroys the audience trust and credibility for them is turning their talk into a sales pitch. This is why people get up and leave the sponsor sessions at many trade shows. But the element of that, which sneaks in all too often, even if the conference organizers are telling people don't sell from the stage, is the self-aggrandizement version of it. You typically notice this when a speaker uses the I pronoun a little too much. I did this. I built that. I was responsible for this idea. They may not be selling their product or service, but they're trying too hard, I might say, to sell their own credibility. If you have to justify why you're on stage, you probably don't need to be on that stage, in my opinion. Back in the late 2000s, when the social media marketing industry was debating the validity of someone being an expert, my take was this. If someone calls you an expert, then you're an expert. If you call yourself an expert, you're an asshole. Another thing to look for is the case studies they use. Assuming the speaker is observing the industry as a whole, they should be using examples that are good, not just examples that are their own. Now, they know more about what they've worked on, so there's a lot of value there. But I watched a speaker last week who presented three case studies, each of which she emphatically communicated. I did this. I came up with this strategy. I was responsible for ABCXYZ. Never mind her team or her client. And if you work in the marketing business, you know 
No one person is ever solely responsible for the big ideas. And guess what? The audience for a speaker is generally representative of an audience for an influencer online too. So keep that self-congratulatory factor in mind when choosing any influence partner. A narcissistic ass is a narcissistic ass regardless of what kind of stage they're on. The other concern I have about the quality of a public speaker is the value they deliver. I can't tell you how many times I've sat through a conference session and thought, what can I do with this? What are my next steps? What was I supposed to have learned? Too many speakers say big words and talk about issues with great thoughtfulness and intelligence, but if you don't boil it down to three or four strong takeaways, you just send people away actually having learned very little. It goes to the Robert Cialdini principle of reciprocation. What are you giving me that I can use? If a speaker doesn't make that clear, they're not very influential from the stage. And if an influencer doesn't make that clear to their audience, they might be an influencer, but they're not necessarily influential. What turns you off when you hear a speaker at an event? What kind of behavior have you noticed from influencers that turn you off in the same light? I'd love to hear your feedback. Record a voice memo and email it, or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comments on a future episode. Have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Jamie Lieberman, host of the UnBusiness Podcast. In each episode, we talk about the issues that face every entrepreneur where business and legal strategy intersect. Subscribe to the UnBusiness Podcast today. It'll make your business that much smarter. Just visit hashtag-legal.com or search for the UnBusiness Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.com.